most of you would know that you have a material body that you can touch, obviously. Do you all know too that you've got a spirit body? A spirit body? And your spirit body is actually, right at the moment, very similar looking to your material body. And from a spirit's perspective, they see your, your spirit body firstly before they see your material body. And you can interact with your spirit body, and all of you do interact with your spirit body when you're in your sleep state. Right? But the part I would like to refer to is the part that's behind both of those two things. The soul. What do you think the soul is? <coughs> Someone said the mind. Can I just address that first? The soul is not your mind. The mind actually belongs to the spirit body. It's energy. Your soul is energy? Soul is energy. Well, actually your material body is energy too. And your spirit body is energy too. So energy doesn't really separate your soul from those two other bodies, does it? They're all made up of energy of some kind. That makes sense, doesn't it? Isn't your material body energy? Yes. Okay. So what is your soul? Let's go back. Isn't the soul um, part of the, um, just, just one aspect of the um, greater divine um, energy? Uh, a part of something else is what you're basically suggesting. Yeah. We'll go through that as to what the soul is in more detail uh, in terms of its physical construction. Right. Sorry. But it's, it's actually not a part of the divine energy unless certain things occur. And we'll talk about that. So, is it like an expression of the higher self or the higher it... A lot of people refer to it as the higher self. Right? I'm just wondering if there's labels that we can throw around. But how does the murderer refer to it? A murderer. How does a murderer refer to their soul? Like, I don't know if their soul would be their higher self. The soul can actually have low or base emotions in it as well. So we'll talk about that too in a second. So what is the soul? <laughs> Any ideas? Emotions. It's your emotions. It's a container for your emotions, your passions, your intentions. Now we got the idea. What other things do you think would be in it? Your memories. Your memories. <coughs> motives. Motives or yeah, intentions or desires. We let's call them desires instead of motives, too. Sure. But motives is fine too. Conscience. Uh, conscience, yes, uh, there is a conscience in the soul, certainly. Um, well, the mind, remember, is separate. We'll talk about this later. Um, the mind belongs to the spirit form just like your brain belongs to your material form. Obviously, when you pass, you still remember everything about your life. So therefore, your material body's brain doesn't store all of your memories about your life. Because if it did, all those memories would be gone, wouldn't they? As soon as you pass, the, the body disintegrates into nothing, doesn't it? whether you put it in a fire or you bury it, it still disintegrates into nothing. So therefore, the brain does not store your emotions and it does not store your memories and it does not have all of these things. You follow me? Is it the cellular memory? Uh, well, the cellular memory, we often refer to cellular memory, but again, that refers to the body. So that wouldn't be that either. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is just rub out those two bodies because, firstly, I want to say that this is the real you. So it's not what you think, it's what you feel that makes you the real you. And of course, personality and all that is involved in the soul as well. Now, by the way, that is... Only, if we're talking about just yourself, that's only a half of a soul, actually. You are, in fact, one half 
of a complete song.